maybe I can use this as well. Okay, so second question. I see most of you got it as well. So I'm gonna go quickly over it. But most of you, some of you choose E instead of B. I'm very surprised. So here we start with two. So our series starts with two. And we continue. Okay, let's now use this. This is a bit lagging. So we start with two. Then we count in three. So we have the series is gonna be two, five, eight, 11, 14, 17, et cetera. And we see this in the automatic series. So this is actually automatic series. Okay, so automatic series. So what we have, this is in term of three. So we know the series is just three X minus one. So this is in term of three, so it's three times X, three times X, X is the term. So for example, the first term is just three X, three times one minus one, which is two. This is always one less than the multiple of three. We see it's two, five, eight, 11. So it is always one less than the multiple of three. The multiple of three are three, six, nine, 12. And we see they're all one less than the multiple of three. So it's three X minus one, this automatic series. And when you get this, it should be very, so 50's number is just three times that 50 minus one, which is 149. Okay. So not 152, but 100, 149 by using automatic series. And I see in the chat, can you also do 50 times by three minus one? Yes, that's what we did, 50 times three minus one. Okay, so we'll find the automatic series for the sequence and it should be very easy. Okay, our next question. Okay, this is a very easy one. I see 40 of you got it correct. So 89% of you got it right. So let's read it. The sum of ages of Kate and her mother is 36. And the sum of the ages of her mother and granny is 81. How old was her granny when Kate was born? So we know that Kate and her mother, correct Kate, for K, M for mother. So K plus mother is 36. And her mother and granny, and her mother is still M, granny is going to be G. You can write M plus G is 81. So we want to know how old was granny when Kate was born. That is granny take away Kate, right? So when Kate is zero, when Kate was born, he's, she's zero age. And that's the old age of granny. So we just use the second equation, take away the first equation. And we're just going to get, M is going to cancel out. So we get G minus K equal to 81 minus 36. And we get 45, which should be C. Are we all right with this? Okay, we're gonna move on. Okay, so here we got a mixture of 30 liters. Uh, of paint is 25% red paint, 30% tint is yellow and 45% water. Now we got 5%, five liters of yellow tint added to the original mixture. What is the percentage, percentage of yellow tint in the new mixture? So we got 30 liters before. How many yellow tint do we have before? So 30% of 30 liters are yellow, right? So that's for yellow. And that will just give us so that is just 0 0.3 times by 30. And that gives us nine liters. Everyone with me? Now we got nine liters of yellow from the start. So now we added five yellow things. So we, in total, we have five plus nine. So the new mixture is five plus 14 liters of yellow. And now our Total paint is going to be 30 plus 5, which is 35 liters total. So in percentage, this is we can write in fraction form first. That's 14 over 35. Then if we simplify this, we should get 2 over 5, right? They all multiple of 7. And this is just 
we times by 20 is top and bottom, that's 40 over 100, so it's 40%. Okay, so let's see. Should be quite a nice one as well. All right, so the first few questions we can go quickly through it because most of you got it right. Now, here in a math contest with 10 problems, a student gained 5.4 correct answer and lose 2.4 in an incorrect answer. If Oliver answered every problem and her score was 29, how correct answer, how many correct answers did he, she have? So here, the number of correct answers we're gonna write as X, the number of incorrect answers as Y, so that's gonna be five times x, that's all the points from correct answers. And we have minus 2y. So every incorrect answer, she's going to lose two mark. And she scored 29 for it. We also know the number of question, correct answer plus the number of incorrect answer is going to be 10. We only got 10 problems. So that's just two equations. And we can double the second equation become 2x plus 2y equal to 20. And we use the first equation plus the second equation. So we do a plus here. So we see the 2y will cancel out. So we get 7x equal to 49. x is equal to 7. So she answers seven correct answers. We can even check it. So 5 times 7. So that means three questions wrong. So y is equal to 3. We can even check it. So 5 times 7 minus 2 times 3 gives us 35 minus six, which is 29. Okay, so that's how you check it. So far so good. Who was the answer for the last question? The answer for the last question was, let me just check. Uh, was this one, right? It was 40%. So this question was 40%. All right, question six. So in a jar of red, green, and blue marbles, or but six are red marbles, or but six are, or but eight are green, and or but four are blue. How many marbles are in the jar? So here we can say red as R, green as G, blue as blue, B. E. So we have all but six are red marbles. So we have green plus blue, gives us six, right? So green plus blue gives six, or other, or other red. Also we have all but eight are green. So that's red plus blue equal to eight. Also we have all but four are blue. So that's red plus green equal to four. So we got three equations. Now these three equations, if we add them all together, we're gonna have two red, two blue, two green equal to four plus six plus eight which gives us, so that's gonna be two R plus two B plus two green. So we have two green, two red, two blue here. Add them together, we get 18. The so red plus blue plus green, we all divide by two both sides. So we get red plus blue plus green is equal to nine. So how many marbles are in the jar? They all have red, green, blue. So red plus green plus blue is nine. So in total, that's nine. Okay. Okay, good. So this one, I know many of you got it right as well. Okay, next one, next one, so, so, some of you got it wrong. So let's have a look at the next one. Pretty interesting question. So here we got the hundreds digits of a three digit number is two more than the units digit. The digits of three digit number are reversed and the result is subtracted from the original three digit number. What is the unit digits of the result? So think about it. The hundredth digit of three digit number is two more than the unit digit. So we, if we have a three digit number, for example, x, y, z. So this is not x times y times z, it's just a three digit number, x, y, z, okay? Have a line on top of it. And we know x is equal to z plus two, right? Now, the three digit number is reversed. So we have z, y, x. And the, so we have the first equation, take away the second equation, right? We know x is bigger than two bigger, two more than z. So let's just look at the unit digit. So z minus x, what gives you two? So we know if z minus x, 
x minus z gives us two, so it's z minus x. Okay, so if you think about it, you can set z, z as any number, for example, z is one, then x must be three, right? Because the x is always two bigger than one, two, uh, two bigger than z. So one minus three, and you have a 10 digit here, you can borrow a 10 digit here, so you get 11 minus three, and you always get a single unit digit eight. If z is two, x must be four, you do take away, it also gives eight. So man, no matter what z and x are, if x is two greater than z, you do the takeaway, it's always gonna give the unit digit eight. Does that make sense? So the answer for question seven is just eight, because you can try out, no matter what you do, you can set z as any number, any single digit number, and you take away a number that is too bigger than it, it's always gonna be at least a unit digit, eight, okay? So try it out and you'll find it's always this case. All right, next question, question nine. So, so no, question eight, sorry. So question eight, hmm, many people, many of you got right. So, here, we got 2018U, the five digit number, is divisible by nine. U is a one digit. So you had to be a single digit between zero from zero to, from zero to nine. So U must be, yeah, that's right, capital U. So it's capital U. U is zero to nine. Always a reminder when this number is divided by eight. Firstly, we can find what U is cause, because we know the rule for if a number is divisible by nine, for the digit sum, so two plus zero plus one plus eight plus u must be a multiple of nine. Because it is divisible by nine, so the digit sum has to be multiple of nine. So these are a little trick you should have learned with us before. And we know that this, is, this becomes 11 plus u gives us a multiple of nine. We also know that uh, u is a single digit number. So the only possible answer for u is u equal to seven, right? Only, so seven plus 11 is 18, 18 is a multiple of nine. You can have anything bigger cause that's gonna be two digit numbers cause the next multiple of nine is gonna be 27. And that's, you need to add uh, 16 and 16 is a two digit number. Also you can't have anything less. So u is seven. So we just have two zero one eight seven divide by eight, and that is just, you can, you can do it, then this should be very easy. You can do it, 16, 27, and that's gonna be three, and we should have a remainder of three. Is that okay for everyone? Uh, has anyone got a question? I don't see a raise up hand yet. If you have got a question, please raise up your hand or just send me a chat. Okay, no raise up hand yet. Okay, so then let's continue. So next question is question nine, where most of you got it wrong. I'm pretty surprised. So let's have a look at this one. So we've got two spinners, A and B and they are spun. On each spinner, the arrow is equally likely to land on each number. So uh, one, two, three, four, this is uh, each, land on each number is a quarter. This one's a third. Then what is the probability that the product of the two number, two spinners number is even? So the, we want the product of two spinners are even. So how do I give even number? We can have odd times even you get even, right? Also, we can have even times even, we get even, right? Also, we have even times odd. The odd matters, why? Because it's different spinner. So this is spinner one, so this is spinner one, this is spinner two. Okay. So 
not two. Okay, so it all gives us even. So that's the three cases. So what gives odd? Odd is just odd times odd. That's the only case, right? So that's all the possibility because we know the product of two number can only be odd or even. It cannot be anything else. It can only be odd or even. So you got two ways of doing it. One way is you went, you work out all these possibilities. So all of these three of possibilities, then you add them up. Or you can work out the possibility of odd. Then we know the total probability is one. And we can use one to take away the probability of we getting odd. And the remaining probability is just all the probability of even numbers. All right, so let's try those methods. First of all, let's look at the even. So spinner one, get odd, and spinner two, get even. That is, uh, odd here is at half, times by, for the even is only one out of three, so that's a third, so that's a six. So even times even is a half times a half, oh, sorry, half times a third again, so that's a six. Even times odd, that's, to even on A, so it's still a half, or there's two third, so that's a third. If you add them up, you should get two third. So that's the way, first way of just working out all the possibility for even. A quicker method is, because we know there's only one possibility for odd, you can just work out odd. So the odd here is just half times by two third, which is a third. So that's the probability for odd. And therefore for even, it just total probability one take away the probability of odd equal to even. So that's the probability, okay? And I just one take away a third gives us two thirds. So both methods gives us two thirds. Uh, it's quite obvious that both methods are gonna give us the correct answer. But we see that whichever you like is fine, but we got two methods for it, okay? I prefer the second method is less calculation, but you have to think about, okay, there's only even odd possibility and odd has less possibility, only has odd times odd. Okay, any question about this one? If not, I'm gonna move on. All right, next question. Okay, I really like this one when I did it myself. It's an angle problem. And it looks very, the shape looks very interesting. So we got five stars, not five stars, five small stars and a big star. They're all regular stars. Therefore, each pointy angle should be the same, right? So this angle, this angle, they're all the same. Okay. So what is the relationship between A, B, and C? Okay, so we see C is here. Are oh, you got a question, Minghan? Yeah, can you mute yourself? Well, the well B and C is well. Should I? I'm about to spoil the answers. So, yeah, can so I, you, you you got B and got C, B plus C equals A. Yeah. B and C are the same. Because mm -hmm. they are isosceles triangles. Very good. Thank you. So B and C are the same. We can see it here. B and C are the same. Since they are isosceles triangles, so B here is equal to C here is, this is also C. This is also B or C. So B is equal to C. We know that B is equal to C because it's an isosceles triangle, right? So B is equal to C. Then what can we do? We see that A is here. We can even work out what A is because in hand you got you got away. You got away how to work out what A is. Well, we have to work out what the angle is on the pentagon right now so there's five sides in the pentagon so five minus two equals three and three times 180 equals um 540 
and then divide by the size, which is 108, 108 minus 180 minus 108 equals 72. Very good. Which means that B equals 36. Thank you. So we work out what A is, but we haven't ever published why A is equal to B plus C. Yet, we want to prove A is equal to B plus C. How do we do that? Now, we know this A must be 72, right? Because we work out that each pentagon this is a regular uh, star, so the pentagon must be a regular pentagon as well. So we know that each angle of a regular pentagon is 108. If you don't know, you can work it out by dividing into triangles and work it out. And we work out that because this line is a straight line. So therefore we have A plus 108 must be 180. Now, we work out A is 72, and therefore this must be 72 as well. This is also A. I'm gonna call this point X, okay? So the pointy part, we know that this is an associated triangle as well. So X plus A plus A is also equal to 180 degrees. We know A is 72. So this is plus 72 plus 72, that's 144, is 180. So the pointy part is 36. We see that? So the pointy part is 36. Now we can look at uh, this part. Use a highlight. Nope, I can't use a highlight. Okay, I'm going to use another color to so So let's look at this straight line. So this is a straight line. They are all the angles here add up to 180 degrees as well. So here we got A plus C and B are the same. So we can just write A plus B plus C and plus a pointy part. And we know this is a regular star. So the pointy part is always 36, gives us 180 degrees. Am I right? So here, A is 72, we know that. So B plus C, B and B is equal to C. So we can just write 2B, we're just gonna be is equal to, so 2B is equal to 180 minus 36 minus A is 72. So 2B gives us, So if you do the takeaway, that's 144 take away 72, which is 72. So B is just 36, which is also means C is 36. So that's how we work out B and C. And we work out A, B and C. So we see that B plus C is equal to A. So that's the way to work out every, every angle here in this shape, okay? Even though you see the shape is bigger or larger, but the angle doesn't change because it's just enlarging, you can explore the all regular star. So the angles, the pointy angle is always the same. This is X as well. Okay, so that's it for this question. Anyone got a question about this one? Okay, no one. Then let's move on. So this, this is a very, this was a very interesting question. Okay, next question, most of you got right. Not too hard. We got trapezium. We got A, B, C, D is a trapezium. It's divided into two parallelogram. A, B, E, F and C, D, F, G. Now we got parallelogram A, B, E, F has an area of 60 meter, meter square. A, F is 10 meter. F, D is four meter. So when we do this type of question, we can always what will we know here already? So this is 10, this is four. You know, this is 60. The length of EG is two times the length of BE. So first of all, we know that AF is 10, so BE must be 10, so EG must be 20. Sorry, EG is two times the length of BE, yeah. EG must be 20. Now it's the area of trapezium A, B, C, D. So here, we also know that C, G must be four as well, because it's a parallelogram, F, D must be equal to C, G, right? A, F must be equal to B, E. E, G is two times B, E, therefore 20. Now we got the 
base and the high, the base and the top base, the top part, we got two lengths. And we know that a uh, formula for the area of the trapezium is the average of the top part and the base and times by the height. So we also need to work out what, what is the height. So we need to work out what the height is. So the height here, mean how you, <coughs> you got an idea? Mm -hmm. Well, you don't need to work out the height because all you need to do is find the base and then see which one is the multiple. Well, that's a very interesting way as well. Sure. That's a very smart way and I didn't think about that. Yeah, so we got quick methods. So we got the top part is 10 plus 4. And we want to add the bottom part which. 10 plus 20 plus 4. I want to divide by 2, right? So that's the average. So that is 14 plus 34 divided by 2, which is 48 divided by 2, which is 24. Yeah, you can do that. What if our answer has more than one multiple of 24? Then we need to work out the height, right? OK, so work out the height. We know for every parallelogram, the area AF, EB, AB, a, B, E, F is 60. We know A, B, E, F is 60. That is equal to the base times by height, right? So that's the formula for parallelogram. So therefore the height is just six. So we would just work out very easy, height is six. So therefore we got the average, so we got 24 times by height. It's just 144, so it's C. Is that all right for everyone? By the way, Minhan, you see that 120 is also a multiple of 24. So your way, we got, we got an answer that is, you can eliminate two answers, but not all of them. And maybe if the height is, what is it called? Not integer, it's a decimal. So the other two answers might also work, okay? So we still have to work out the height. All right, so, that's it for this question. Let's look at our question 12. Aha, so this one got many of you. Only 46.67% 46, of you got this one right. So we want to work out how many zeros is the product of one times two times three up to times 25 and with, and with. So we want to know how many zeros are there. So how do we make zero? If you think about it, only if the unit digit times five gives 10, no other numbers gives us zeros, right? Everything, for example, four times five gives us 10, that's because two times two times five, that's 20, gives us 20, gives us two times 10. Which means only two times five gives us 10, a zero in the end. So for this question, we just need to look at how many twos and how many fives are there. So that's combining them. How many zeros are there? So how many tens are there? <coughs> so we know that if we multiply by 10, it's always got a zero. So we just need to check how many tens are there. So here, we know we got many, many twos. That's many twos. You can count it, but there's many twos. But there's this not as many fives as twos, right? So for just less fives, so we just can just look at five, how many fives are there? So we know the fives are five, 10, 15, 20, and 25. These are all multiples of five. So how many fives are there? Five is just one five. 10 is two times five, so that's one five. That's three times five. Oops, sorry. It's three times five. This is four times five, and this is five times five. But how many fives are there in this product? So it's how many fives in total? One, two, three, four, five, and six. So just six fives. Six, six fives. And there's definitely more than uh, six twos because there's how many even numbers? There's more than 12 even numbers, right? There's 12 even numbers here. So that's at least 12 twos. 
there's definitely more than 12 twos because four can be as two times two. So just many twos, only six fives. So therefore, the maximum amount of zeros we can have is just six. So six twos, we use six twos times by six fives, we're gonna get six zeros, six tens, that means six zeros, and all the other number can't make any zeros. Only two times five gives us 10, no other number gives us 10. Does that make sense? If you've got a question, please raise up your hand. Don't be, don't be shy to raise up your hand, okay? All right, we're gonna move on then. Okay, question 13. Okay, so this is a logic question, which I personally very like, because I like to use logic to work out questions. So this is nothing to do with, like not using numbers or calculation, we're just using our logic. So we got five runners. We got PQRST, maybe P for PIP, okay? So we got P beats Q, P also beats R, Q beats S, and T finishes after P. If they got rank, we can, we can just write this down, P is better than Q. You don't have to write this down if you don't want to learn like this way. Fine, you just need to remember P beats Q, P, P, B, P beats R, Q beats S, and P beats also T, because T finishes after P, so P also beats T, sorry. Q beats S and T finishes after P and before Q. So P beats T, but T beats Q, because T finishes before Q, right? So we can rank them in order. So who could not finish have, who could not have finished? So remember here we says not, have finished third in the race. So you see that every answer has P, so we know P must <laughs> not finish because we know P cannot finish on third place. Okay, so this is a little hint. Uh, yes, Dian? So we can tell that once we know P is in first place, then we know that Q beats S, so you can do P, beats T, who beats Q, who beats S. Okay, so you've got P in the third place. So if we've got P in the third place, very good point. So we've got Q and R. Q and R must be here, right? So this can be Q, R. This can be Q, R, because P beats Q and R. But P also beats T, right? right. And also beats S because Q beats S. Yes. yes. So P oh, can okay. not be on the same place. Because no one's no one So we know that P must be first place. place. All right, thank you. Yes, Mihan? You're muted. You mute yourself first. Well, so we can all see that P, P comes in first place. That's the reason why P is in literally every single answer. So P is in first place. And I and then it says that P beats Q and P also beats R. So that means like P is in the middle sort of section. But if but so that means that S won't be in like the third place. Okay. So that just gives us D. I'm not sure about E because it, it has three answers. Okay, thank you. So, yes, David. Wait, because uh, the P, uh, T finishes after P doesn't mean that T is next, so second. Because nothing else can beat T then. Um, T finished after T, P. This, it only means, it doesn't say if there's anything between P and T, right? Because R and T could be second, but it can't beat Q because T beats Q. Okay, so let's have a look. You all got a very interesting one. Yes, so that is right. That is very close. And I saw another raise up hand. Is that is that anyone? Yes, is that 
Yeah, you can mute yourself. Hello. Um. So basically, um, first of all, T, right? T and R, we don't know if it's like could be third or second. So they both can be third or second because there's nothing obscure in their way. So anything with T or R is immediately um execute execute. You could call it um. So, and then there's always I'm gonna the stop possibility. You there. Maybe. Maybe not, not quite, not quite right. Okay, so this this question is a logic question. We see that P has to have four numbers, four letters be, behind it, so P must be first place. That's what we all agreed with. Now, for this question, the easiest way for you is just to test it out. So, if, for example, let's look at let's just look at from this. So if Q is on the third place, is that possible or not? Okay. So if Q is on the three, we know P, Q, B, P, B, Q, so Q, B, T, S. So we have S can be on this two place, right? Not relation, T must be Q, so T must be here. And R can be anywhere here, right? So Q can be the third place, so we can eliminate Q, right? Because Q can finish in third place. Now, let's try R. If R is on the third place, what do we know? We know that P beats R, P beats R, and there's not no other relation with R. So P beat Q, Q, so you can have T, Q, S. So R can also be on the third place. Am I right? Does everyone see that? Okay, so we eliminated two already. So we can just try another one. Now S, because we know Q beat S, Q must be here. I mean, also T must be beat Q, so there's no place for T. Q B S, Q must be here, so there's no other place for S, cannot finish in third place, P cannot finish in third place. And lastly, let's try out T. So if T is on third place, we know P beat T, T beats Q, so Q can be here. We know Q beat, Q beat S, so Q can not be here, so Q can only be here, S because Q beat S, S has to be last place. P beat R, R can be anywhere, R can be here. So T can finish in the third place. So now, by trying them out, you know that only two works. So the answer is just P and S. And thank you for one who just uh, said that we can limit R and T straight away. Well, by trying them out and putting them so in order, I want everyone to have the logical way, the method to do it. Okay, so here, the answer is just P and S. Does everyone see that? Is everyone happy with this? By the way, if your camera works, you can just turn your camera on, I can't see your face. I'm not sure if you're happy or not. And if you're happy with this, give me a smiley face. Yes, I see JK, give me a thumbs up. Okay, good. All right, so we're gonna move on to our next question. Okay, this question, I think I got most of you. So it's just counting how many triangles are there. You're always gonna like miscount them. It's a pretty hard question. Only 13 people got this one right. All right, so the way to count it is to split it into different triangles and count it to have, have a look. So first of all, I'm, not, I'm gonna count this triangle. This triangle here. How many triangles are here? Wow. That's one, two, three, four, five. Five, right? And we can every two triangle make us another triangle. So that's one, two, three, and four, or five plus four. Every three triangles makes a big triangle. One, two, three, plus three. Then if you continue, you plus two and plus one. So that's the large group. And that's gonna give us 15. We got 15 tr triangles here. Now, let's think about the triangles here.
So here we've got one, small triangle here. So one, two, three, four, right? Four triangle, five, six, six triangles. Remember, see that? One, two, a big triangle, three, four, five, six. Four, five, and six. Now what we can look at, we can look at this triangle here. Uh, let me use another color. Let's use orange, black orange. Let's look at this triangle here. So how many triangles are here? So remember right now I'm splitting all into the triangles that has no repetition. So there's just no double counts. So we have one triangle here, two triangle here. So one small triangle, two small triangle, one large triangle, three. So those are three triangles. Okay, and then we can look at the triangles. Let's, this time I'm gonna use green. Let's look at this triangle. Can everyone see it? It's a triangle here as well. But because we already counted these two, we use when we're doing blue triangles. So that's, let's continue, that's one. When we have these three parts, so one, two, three, using these three parts, that's one triangle. Then four parts, two triangles, and three triangles. So that's another three. Now, let's look at um, um, more triangles. We can also have this triangle. So it's in brown, and we see that this triangle has one, two, three. So it's actually three plus two plus one. We can have one triangle, that's three of them. Using two triangles to make us bigger triangle, it's two of them, and the large one is, so that's six. Okay, and the lastly, we can look at the big triangle we have, which is the total triangle outside. And I just, also 15, right? It's still five plus four plus three plus two plus one. So that's all the triangles they have. So that is just, the answer is just 15 plus 15 plus six plus six plus three plus three. And we're gonna get 48. Does everyone see how I counted the triangles? I'm happy with this. Give me some thumb ups if you're happy with this. If you're confused, please raise up your hand. Yes, me hand. Well, I'm not confused. I put 49 because I counted the big triangle twice. Hmm, unlucky. Yeah, you miscounted some time. Remember the repetition. Yes, Dan? Dan? You got a question? Okay. Oh, you got something to say, you can also raise up your hand, it's fine. So, so that's count. So remember, don't double count. You remember to make your work very clear so that you don't double count. Okay, so that's this question, just counting triangles. Pretty fun, to be honest. Okay, here, this one, a bit hard. Our, our question is getting harder. But this question is a bit hard, and but more people, has half of you has got this one correct, which is very well done. So for this question, what is the average, or we can say the mean, of all five digit numbers that can be formed by using each of the digits one, three, five, seven, and eight, only exactly only once? So we know all the five digit numbers. We can have one, three, five, seven, eight. We can have one, three, five, eight, seven, and etc. Da da da. There's so many of them. All right. So. If you think about it, what can we start with? We can start with thinking, how many ways are there to fix a number in a slot? So for example, we have 
Yes, Minghan, you got something to say? Well, I don't know if the way I'm doing it is correct, but well, I, I at first I replaced the eight with a nine on purpose, like so. So one, three, five, seven, nine. Um, the mean of one, five, seven, nine is five, and then I I did five, 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 and then I did the one that's slightly less because of it's an eight. So I so. Is it C? Mm, answer is C, but let's do it in a proper way. So here, each number, so let's think about five digit number. So if I fix the number here, for example, I just want one here. How many ways are there for different numbers here? So we got uh, four number remaining, four, three, two, one, I'm five them together. And we get 24 ways. So if I fix one in a place, it appears 24 times, right? So therefore, the number two, not two, sorry, three, five, seven, eight, also appear in the same place 24 times. So let's think about just like one more number. So here we can have one plus three plus five plus seven plus eight. We know it will happen 24 times in each place. And what we do here is it happens on all the digits on all the place, right? So not just the first place they happen 24 times, it happens on the second digit, third digit, fourth digit, unit digit as well. 20 times by one, 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 one. And that gives us the total number. And if you use a calculator to do it, or you, if you don't have a calculator, you can just do this quickly. That's 24 by 24 times 11111. And 24 times 24 is not too hard. And then if you just do it, you should get on top of 639936. Now, so that's the total of all the five digit numbers. Now, how many ways are there to arrange five-digit numbers? We know the, the number of ways to arrange five-digit numbers. It's just five ways here, four ways here, three ways here, two ways here, and one way here. The five times four times three times two times one, which is 120 ways. So we use six, three, nine, 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 three, six, divide by 120, we get five, three, 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 two point eight. So that's the casual way of doing it. So we see that we just work out the total of this number and divide by the total number of ways we can arrange this number. So we know that each number appears at every place 24 times. And we can use the place value because it happens on the uh, 10,000 10, digits, thousands digits, hundreds digits, tens digits, and the, the unit digits. So we can by one, 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 one. Okay, so this is our method one. You got a question, Stephen? Stephen? Um, how to spell one 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 one? Okay, so here, remember we got five digits, right? Got five place. So it happens on the first unit digit, right? So that's the one here. It happens on the tenth digit as well. That's why I times by another ten here, right? It happens on hundreds digits, so it times by a hundred as well. It happens on the Thousand digit times by a thousand as well. Or you can write this way. If you think this is confusing, you can write this. This is we times by one because we know it happens on the unit digit, right? We plus this again. <laughs> I'm just gonna use this as the as the whole thing here. We'll write this as this. Okay, it happens on ten digit as well. We have to use the unit digit, all numbers here, plus all this here in the tens digit. Also, if we need plus this in the hundreds digit. Also, we need plus, oops, that's times. Plus this in the a thousands digit. And in the end, we need to do this times 10,000 digits. Is that okay? 
because it happens on every digits, right? Then we see they all have uh, this one as the same, so you can add them all together, you get one, 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 one. Does that make sense, Stefan? Yes. Okay. So now I'm going to introduce you method two, which is going to be a real easier way. So method two, you're going to love this way. We don't have to do so much calculation, but you have to understand it. Okay, so first of all, think about what if I change the question? It's not say five digit number. What about one digit number? That's going to be easy, right? That's just one plus three plus five plus seven plus eight divided by five, right? Or we can say times one divided by five, right? Times one, because it's the only, the, or the only one appear once on the unit digit, right? We want to play on the unit digit. And that's going to give us 24 divided by five, which is 4.8. This is very easy, right? If we just look at one digit. Now think about it. What if I change the question to two digit number? What's So if the two digit number, again, it's going to be one plus three plus five plus seven plus eight. We know this is the average. It times by 11. Why? Because the average happens on the, this is the average of the five number. It happens on the ones digit. It also happens on the unit, unit digit. It also happens on the tens digit as well, right? So it times by 11. Now think about, a five digit number. So if the five digit number, we just have 4.8, our average times by one, 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 one. Because that happens on the every digit, on the unit digit, tens digits, hundreds of digits, digit, thousand digits, 10,000 digits. The average is always the same, right? This square number. And that just gives us five, three, 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 two point eight straight away. So method two is very easy. You just work out the average of one, three, five, seven, eight, and times by 10,000, 11, Yes, Yuhan? Um, I don't really understand where like the two came from. Where the two came from, where's two? The brackets one plus three plus five plus two plus eight. One plus Two. I'm not sure which part you're talking about. I don't see the method. Oh, that's a seven. I thought that was a two. Sorry. Okay, it's a seven. My bad. Sorry for my handwriting. Yes, it's a seven. Any more questions? Yes, Mihai, you got a question? Slightly off topic, but we're going to have you next week as well. For what? This lesson, or is there no more lesson? Uh, this is just, this is not a lesson. So this is just a recap of the paper, all right? So if there's any more, what is it called, think of paper, probably it's me that's going to go over it, okay? Oh, okay, thank you. All right, so that is it for this question. Question, you can ask me later. I'm gonna move on now. So here, okay, so we'll move on to our hard part. So we only got four challenge questions. So this is not multiple choice question. So this one's quite easy. A fast train and slow train are running on two parallel tracks side by side. A fast train has a length of 160 meter and a speed of 25 meters per second. The slow train has a length of 140 meter and a speed of 15 meter per second. The slow train departs earlier than the fast train and the fast train catches up with the slow train after the same time. How long does it take the fast train to completely overtake the slow train? From the moment the fast train heads up, head catches up the slow train's tail to the moment the fast train tail leaves the slow train's head behind. So many of you, if, you, if some of you don't, don't understand what the question is, means, I'm, my, I'm gonna draw a diagram for you. Okay, so this question only 24% go right. Yeah. 
So here, so we got two train. But let's say go boo boo boo. I'm gonna draw this. This is gonna be train A. I got train B. Okay, that different different length, but it's fine. You, you should know this. This is not gonna be the train A. Train A is slower train. Okay, there's no train in train B. So let's just write slow train across train. It's not drawn to scale, just say. So slow train, fast train. So at the moment, when the head of the fast train meets the slow train, we start to calculate the time. And then when the fast train is here, not here, sorry. So after some time, so they're both still moving. Slow train hasn't stopped, so they're still both moving, right? So we got slow train is still moving forward. Then the fast train has overtake the slow train. And that's the fast, that's the slow one. And that's the head of the slow, right? They're all moving this, uh, on the, to the right. It's the head of the slow train and the tail of the slow train. So that's the time we need to calculate. But how do we do that? So let's think about they all moving together. So the total length of the fast train you need to go with is the distance here, right? So this is 100, the slow train has 140 meter and the fast train has 160 meter, right? So the fast train is just to overtake slow train, so it has to travel 140 meter, right? That's when fast train, the head meets from tail to head to slow train's head, right? That's 140 meter. Then it needs to travel another 160 meter because it needs to have the tail to be, meet the slow train's head. So the total distance is just 140 plus 160, which is 300 meter. All right, so that's the distance we need to we will have. And let's think about the speed. The speed, with the fast train is moving at 25 meters per second, and slow train is moving at 50 meters per second. Now, so therefore, slow train is moving at 50 meter, fast train is moving faster, Right, going this way and it's slowly overtaking. So the, as they're moving all together in parallel, right, to the same side. So therefore, the speed for the fast train to overtake the slow train is so the speed here. It's very easy. It's just the fast take away the slow, which is 25 take away 15. So it's overtaking as a 10 meter per second. Now we got the distance, we got the speed, we can work out the time, very easy. So we just use distance, divide by the speed, divide by the speed and get the time, which is 30 seconds. Okay, Minghan, you got a question? Well, does the answer not depend on how much earlier the slow train goes? Like it could go earlier like by what, 10 minutes and then the fast train can go, then it wouldn't be 30 seconds. Very good question. So does it depend on how, how early does the slow train go? Uh, the question is, the answer is no, it does not. Because the question is asking, how long does it take the fast train to completely overtake the slow train from the moment the fast train's head catches up the slow train? So when it calculates oh. from when fast train's head meets slow train's tail. Does that make sense? Okay. That was a very good question. But in this question, because the condition is here, so it does not matter. Is that okay? okay. Yep. Any more question? Thumbs up if you're happy. Okay, I see some thumbs up. Very good. Let's look at question 17 now. Okay, this is a very easy question in my perspective. If you, if you thought of the correct way, because you need to think about which way for you to do it. Okay, so here, we got square, has side length 10, given that AE is equal to BF, so they all, they are equal. EC is 
three and DF is two. Find the shaded area. So here, a little hint here is you see this rectangle. The shaded area is just half of this rectangle, right? Everyone knows this, right? You can see because this triangle is just split in half. Okay, so what we can do here is by drawing some more lines to divide this shape. First, I'm going to draw a line from B parallel to BF here. Then I'm going to draw a line from C parallel to AE. Now, this question becomes easier. How? Let's look at, let me fill in this color here. So let's not look at this shape. Let's look at this shape. So I'm going to write some coordinates, OK? So we've only got A, B, C, D, E, F here. I'm going to write G here, H here. So we see that A, G, H, D. The shaded part is half, right? I'm going to write shaded part is a half, right? A, G, D, H, H, D is half. So, and now let's look at, I'm going to write this one H, this is going to be I, this is going to be J. So we see that A, I, B, J is, is half as well. The shaded part is half. Do you see it? I'm going to write a coordinate here. So H, I, J, let's with K. We've got B, J, E, K. The shaded part is also half. No, not the B, J, E, K, sorry. Not the B, J, E, K. Actually, we, let's, let's, let me mark H, I, J, K, L. This part, this point cell. So B, L, C, K is also half. So B, L, C, K, we see this, this rectangle. The shaded part is also half because it's a it's just a triangle there, right? Last part, we got L, we got M and N here. So let's have M, D, C. Oops, I meant to write N here. M, D, N, C is also half. You see that M, D, N, C is also half of the shaded area. So they all half if you combine these four shapes together. That's all half. And the third length here is three, right? So this is three, this is two. So the area of the middle part, so the area of red part is six, right? Two times three. You know the total area of this shape is 100. So 10 times 10 is 100. Sorry, 100 meter square, or that doesn't say, say the unit. It's just the 100 meter square. So that's a square. Now we know that if you take away the middle part, 100 take away 6, equal to 94. Don't need a bracket. That's the area of the remaining square, right? 94 square. That's excluding the middle. Now, excluding the middle, all the parts, we know it, the shaded part is just half. So the remaining part is 94 divided by 2. So that is 47. And remember, we also need to count the middle parts. So the middle part is 47 plus 6, which is 53. So the answer is 53 square units. Isn't this interesting and easy? If you find the line to split every other shape into half, Do you like this question? Give me a thumbs up if you do. Okay, no thumbs up, no one likes this one. Thumbs down. <laughs> thumbs up from Yuhan. Okay, thumbs down from Stefan. Okay. Or thumbs up. All right, so if you've got a question, you can ask me now about this one. So you see all the shape have divided into half. 
I pass on the middle part. Okay, I'm gonna move on then. Let's look at question 18. Okay, this one is a hard one. You need to use what kind of efficiency. So we got Alex and Bob love to fold prints. For a bag of end prints, Alex will need two hours to complete, while Bob needs three hours. One morning, Alex and Bob started to fold prints at the start time, at the same time. After 30 minutes, Alex rested for 10 minutes. So Alex, a bit lazy. I mean, he's tired. He's probably just not as great as Bob. So Bob continued. He didn't rest. Then when they finished a bag of end prints together, Alex folded 24 more prints than Bob. Find the values of n. So what's the total number of n? So here, we want to use what kind of efficiency, which I've learned before. So first of all, efficiency. So we know Alex takes two hours to complete. So that's just the efficiency, just the total bag is n, so that's n over two. So that's every hour, you can do n over two queens, right? So that means every hour, Alex can fold n over two queens, right? Because one hour, two hours, he can fold n queens. So that means one hour, he can fold n over two. Does that make sense? And for Bob, it's n over three. Quite easy for to write out the efficiency. Now, we know that they are working together. And they fold it for 30 minutes to get first. So that's the efficiency is n over two plus n over three, right? That's them working together, that's the total efficiency. And times by half hour, 30 minutes is half hour. So times by half hour. And that's gonna give us three n over six plus two n over six times by half. And that's five n over 12. So in 30 minutes, they have folded 5n over 12 screens. Is that okay? And then they rested for 10 minutes. So in that 10 minutes, Alex is not folding any cranes, but Bob is folding cranes on his own. So Bob has folded an over three times out. And we know 10 minutes is just uh, one over six, right? One over six hours. Okay, for everyone. So he has folded 10 minutes, which is over six hour. And therefore, the, and in 10 minutes, yes, Bob has folded on its own, right? So it is n over three, the, work, the efficiency times by the time is called, equal to the workload. So by the way, if you don't know the, Efficient, uh, the equation is just the workload is workload is equal to efficiency times by time. We got the efficiency of Bob times by the time, 10 minutes. It gives us n over 18. So in that 10 minutes, he has folded n over 18 cranes. Then after 10 minutes, they started to fold the cranes together then. So the efficiency is still n plus n over two plus n over three. That's the total efficiency of the total efficiency. I can write here total efficiency. Oops, which is right. Total is fine. Total is just n over two plus n over three, which is five n over six. Okay. So in that ten minutes, they, we don't know how many, how long they folded again to finish the bag. So we know that after 10 minutes, so that's 40 minutes gone already. After 40 minutes, they have already, so 40 minutes time, they have folded n over 18 plus five n over 12, right? And that is just, uh, if you do the calculations. Actually, let's make it easier. 
Let's do, do this in one step. So how many, let's think about how many cranes are remaining. So the number of cranes are remaining. So we know just in total there's n cranes. So in the first 40 minutes, so there's they folded n over 18, that's in the 10 minutes, and folded 5n over 12, right? So how many cranes are remaining? That is just, uh, they all have a common multiple of 36. So just 36 and take away 15 and take away 2n over 36, which is 19n over 36. So we have 19n over 36 cranes to be folded, right? Now, that's our workload left. And we want to know how long did they fold. So we know the efficiency is 5n over 6. So we just use the workload, 19n over 36, divided by the workload, not the workload. They are divided by their efficiency, so 5n over 6. Then you should just get uh, 19 over 30. Yep, 19 over 30. And that's in hours, it's just 38 over 60, right? Because it's in hours. So this is just, which means 38 minutes. So they have they use 38 more minutes to fold 19n over 36 cranes, right? So in total, if I draw a little line here, now we know from here that's 30 minutes, uh, 10 minutes, and here we got another 38 minutes. That makes sense. So they start 30 minutes together. Then Alex went to rest for 10 minutes. Then they fold, fold their 30 minutes together again. So in total, how long did they, how long did they, how long did Alex fold? So Alex folded, he rested for 10 minutes. So he folded 30 or 38, which is 68 minutes, right? And Bob has folded 30 plus 10 plus 38 is an eight. That is 78 minutes. Is that okay? So Alex folded 68 minutes, Bob folded 78 minutes. So we want to find the value of N. We know that Alex folded 24 more cranes than Bob, so we can work out at 60 minutes how many did Alex fold. So Alex folded 68 minutes, so which is, Six in hour, that is just 68 over 60. So the, the workload, the efficiency for Alex is n over two times by 68 over 60. That is just 17 over 30. And for Bob, he has folded n over three times by 78 over 60. And that is just, 13 and over 30, so 13 and over 30. So you see that after they finish all the workloads, so Alex folded 70 and over 30, Bob folded 30 and over 30. Yes, we can. Um, I understand like the steps, but like, how do you get from like 19n over 36 divided by 5n over 6 to like 1930? Following the equation, so here we got the workload, right? So we know 19n over 36 is the workload, which is the number of cranes need to be folded after 40 minutes, right? That's the amount of cranes that is left. That's the workload we divide by the efficiency. The efficiency of them working together is 5n over 6, right? And that gives us the time. Is that okay? Now we see that uh, we have Alex is 17 over 30, Bob is 30 and over 30. So we just use Alex minus Bob, which we get 
4n over 30, right? Alex minus 4 is just 4n over 30. And this is just 24, right? Because Alex 4 is 24 more coins. Then you just, just do the calculation and it's just 180. So n equals 180. So Alex minus Bob, that's the Alex, the number of cranes Alex folded is 17 and over 30. The number of cranes Bob folded is 30 and over 30. And they minus, we get 4n over 30, and that is 24 cranes. And n is 180. Ooh, pretty hard one. Is everyone happy with this? Does everyone understand this? If you don't understand, don't please raise up your hand. Any part that you are not sure with, please raise up your hand or we're gonna move on. Okay. Uh, which part do you not understand, Andrew? Are you there? You can unmute yourself and talk to me, please. From the ending of the... Which part? Like the bit you wrote in blue. So, did, did you understand why Alex has um, folded 68 minutes? Do you understand why Alex Bob has folded 78 minutes? Yeah. And then, you know, the total crane Alex folded in 68 minutes is just 68 over 60. That's the time. And the efficiency for Alex is n over 2, right? So the workload we get, so efficiency times time, we get the workload. So Alex has folded in 16 minutes. He has folded 17 n over 30. Is that okay? Bob has folded 30 n over 30. That's using the same, same method. Now Alex minus Bob. So Alex take away Bob is the number of creams. So the number of creams that Alex folded, take away the number of creams that the Bob has folded is 24, right? Because Alex folded 24 more creams than Bob. So then for 17n over 30 minus 30n over 30 is 4n over 30, which is 24. Then we can solve for n as n. Does that make sense? Mm, yeah. All right, any more questions? Don't be shy to ask. No more questions, then I'm gonna move on. Okay. This one, this one is actually quite easy. To think about it. Well, it took me some time to figure out when I was doing it on my own. It's because if you think about it, we want what's the least amount of number that have to be removed from the sequence one, two, three up to 2022, such that no remaining number is product of two other remaining numbers. So we know that any two numbers multiplied together can give a number in 2022. For example, if two times anything, like two times three, two times six, and two up to what? Two thousand times one thousand and twelve is a bigger number than two thousand and twenty-two. Well, everything is included. Yes, Ming Han. So we're basically looking for uh, the amount of prime numbers there are up to, in, in, except for one, which is an exception, up to two thousand and twenty-two. Mm, you just look for the prime numbers, but there's going to be many prime numbers. There's so many prime numbers on there. Can you find all numbers of all prime numbers from 20, 2022? It's, it's going to be pretty hard, right? Yes, we can. You got, you got a question or nothing? Um, I don't think it's going to be all of the prime numbers because, like, three is a prime number and, like, you can times it still and then and get, like, multiples and stuff. Yeah. So here, a very interesting way, a very interesting thought that when I was doing it, I thought about, so I want two numbers. I don't want any two numbers to have a product of that is, that is within 2022, right? So I want all the remaining number to have a product that's greater than 2022. When I think about it, aha, I think I thought about what if I start with dividing to half, so if I just cut half, right? So that's one zero one one. From here, all numbers have a product bigger than one zero, bigger than two twenty twenty two, right? 
that's not how to think, right? So that's, but that's not the least. So I thought about, we can have some more numbers. Then I thought about what two numbers gives us, gives us a number that is bigger than 2022, and what two numbers gives squares. So for example, if you have 43, or 43. But think about a square of the number. So 45 times 45, what does that give us? So 45 times 45 gives us 225. I think about 44 times 44 gives us, actually, I don't have a, okay, I have a calculator with me. So let me just do that quickly. One at three six. Yes, Minha? Well, so you're saying 44 times 44 is 1936. Yeah. Oh, well, you didn't really need a calculator to work it out. Don't worry. We, I know we don't need a calculator to work it out. You don't okay. even need, think I just do it mentally. It's very easy. Okay, sure. I'm saving time, okay? All right, so we got 40. So why did I move to the previous page? Okay, so we have 45 times 45, and it's 2025. <laughs> 44 times 44 is less than 2022, right? So if you think about it, if we have 44 and 45, we get 1980 which is less than, but if I remove any number that is less than 44, so I remove all numbers that is less than 44, remove all numbers less than 45, sorry. Less than 45. Then we, our sequence is gonna be 45, 46, up to 2022. And you can check the two smallest number, 45 times by 46, so 45 times 46 is definitely greater than 2022, right? Because 45 times 45 is 2025. So we just remove any, all numbers from 44. And all the remaining number has a product greater than 2022. And remember, so is the answer 44? The answer is it's not 44. The answer is going to be 43. So I remove all the numbers from 44, less than 40, less than 45, that's 44 numbers, right? But remember we have a one, so one times any number, it's always less than, it's always, so one, uh, sorry, one times any number, it's always all right. So the remaining number is a product of two other remaining numbers. So one times anything is itself, so it's, just, it's not equal to other remaining number. Right? So one is always there. But we never need to remove one. So we just 43 numbers we need to remove. Is that okay? Is everyone happy with this? Okay. Okay, it is. And we're gonna go on to our last question. Oops. Okay, last question. I have six different colors to fill in each of the areas in the picture below. If the same color is not filled in any adjacent area, and not all colors have to be used, how many color, how many ways can the picture be colored? Remember, we have six different colors. And same color not filled in any adjacent areas. For example, if I put red here, you can't have red as D, B, E, K, because they're adjacent. Now, think about where should we start? Remember in this type of question, we start with the one that has 
contact with the almost the most. So in this case, it's B. But B, if you put a color here, that A, all other books cannot have that color, right? So if I put a color six, sorry, not a color red here, A, D, A, C, D, E cannot have red. All other books cannot have red. Does that make sense? So if we colored blue first, not blue, sorry, B, colored box B first, how many different color I can put here? That's six different colors, right? In box B, we have six, right? Then we can start to any other, let's think about any other box, it's fine. Uh, let's start with, because any all other box will have contact with two, apart from B, they're gonna have contact with two other box. E is gonna have A and C, E is gonna have A and C. C has contact with D and E, it has contact with D and E. So we can start with any box afterward. Let's look at A then. So how many colors does A have color? We only have five colors left, right? It cannot have the same color as B. Now, after I have colored A, let's think about D. So how many colors can D color? That's four color remaining, right? Because they can't have the same colors A and B. Now let's look at C. Well, C, there's two cases. First, C, the top part, with C, because C can be same as A, right? Same as A. C can be same as A. And that will leave us E will have four different color to put in, right? Because A and C are the same color, and B is one color. So E have four different color to color in. But if you see it's different, therefore A, that means uh, C has three different color to color in, because it cannot be same as A, it's not same as B or D, so it has three different color. Then E will have three different color as well. Does that make sense? Because E has A, B, C, A, B, C are all different colors, so E only have three different colors, three colors left. So in total, there's only two ways to for this. So that's the first probability is C, C, M, S, A. That is six times five times four times one, because C, 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 M, S, A, that's only one probability, right? Times four. And that is the first probability, first possibility. So that is, okay, five times six times four times four, 480. Now the second way is, six times five times four. And when C is different with A, three different ways, times three different ways. So this is just 1080 ways. Okay. So in total, we just add them up. So we get, oops. 080 plus 480, we get 1560. And that is it for this question. So remember the key point of this question is to start with the one that has most contact with everything else, which is B. But we start with B, you can think about possibility, then we can just start, then we can go, we can B from A or B from E, it's fine. You just continue to do it, all right? Is there any question about this one? How does, how does everyone feel about after we go over the paper? Does everyone feel that paper is all right? Or is it still very hard? Give me a thumbs up if you think it's, it's easier now, or you give me, you still think it's really hard paper, you give me a thumbs, thumbs up. Okay, easier now, easier now. Let's see many thumbs up. So, so, all right. All right, so if you got any question, you can ask me now. I'm free to answer any question now. And I will think up, sample paper is over. 
Remember, if you enjoyed, you enjoyed my me talk, walk through of this paper, tell your parents that you like me. I'd be appreciated. Thank you. All right, and that's, that's, that is it. Everyone is free to leave. If you like, by the way, if you like to, if you're year six or year seven, after summer, if you're year six, going to year seven, I have the summer holiday course on our website. And if you like me, you really enjoyed me, you can tell your mom or tell your dad to join my class. All right, and that is it. Everyone is free to go. Yes, Minghan. Haha, -ha, now no one knows who, who's speaking now. I know you're Minghan. All right, thank you, everyone. You got a question, you can stay behind and ask me, otherwise you're free to go. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Abby, are you there? Good question, Abby.